When Schmidt Ocean Institute was founded in 2009, there was a commitment from our founders and from those of us that were part of the organization all the way through today to continuously try to improve what we can provide and how we can better collaborate and partner with the scientists. And this latest effort really has been a turning point for this organization. We made two really significant changes to improve our mapping capabilities. We reconstructed the bow of our ship and we purchased a state-of-the-art autonomous underwater vehicle, the Childlike Empress. Getting high quality data is so core to what we do that we're willing to completely cut off the bow and try a new one. Anytime the ship heads into the sea, our bow comes out and plummets down again, and it causes bubbles to then sweep down the hull. When we're mapping, our transducers are designed to paint through water to the seafloor and back. But when they hit air, like bubbles that are running down the hull, that sound dissipates really quickly. So we're not actually able to get data. You're taking an existing conventional bow that's made for an offshore vessel, and we installed an entirely new science bow, a bow that would allow the water to flow under the ship in such a way that it would not interfere with the scientific echo sounders, with the multi-beam sonars, really making it a cutting edge, state-of-the-art mapping machine. And that's what this ship has become. The data, the resolution is phenomenal. We're able to map at a full ocean depth in weather that we had never been able to map it before and at speeds we had not been able to map before. The data that's going to a repository and ultimately creating a global map through an effort called Seabed 2030 that's going to benefit society as a whole. Our new autonomous underwater vehicle, the Childlike Empress, is a game changer for us. This is the largest autonomous underwater vehicle available to science. There is not really a vehicle like this that's being offered uh, universally to the international science community. The vehicle has a high SAS, which is synthetic aperture sonar that gives you your very high resolution maps. Uh, the standard EM2040 bathymetry mapping. Uh, it's got a sub-bottom profiler. It's got a magnetometer. It's got a CO2 sensor, O2, uh, methane sensors for sniffing out hydrothermal vents, TTD. It also has the ability to add additional payloads. So that was one of the big uh, selling features of this type of vehicle is that we are able to, to add on additional sensors in the future. The vehicle can run autonomously uh, using its own navigational systems and maintain a very high precision accuracy of its location. It's rated for 6,000 meters, so that's now increasing our capabilities from 4,500 meters with the ROV up to 6,000 meters, which is basically allowing us to go from 55% of the, the seafloor access up all the way up to 98%. The sea trials went exceptionally well. We tested a number of different capabilities of the vehicle, which all proved very successful. I'm really looking forward to the AEV being utilized as much as possible. We'll do the, the initial mapping with the ship to kind of get a broad view of the seafloor, and then we'll use the AEV for going in and kind of really looking at some specific areas, and then we use the ROV for going down and doing that sampling and scientific missions. We're providing access, we're providing information, we're providing resources. One of the things that we've heard uh, time and time again is you can't care for what you don't know, what you have no data on, and that's what we're able to now provide. 